In this video, I'm going to show you how you can start from scratch with SharePoint Server 2010 installation and then go all the way from installing SharePoint to configuring it and then ending up with a SharePoint site. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is go to my DVD drive, which has the SharePoint Server 2010 DVD in it. And I'm going to start the splash screen to start my setup for a SharePoint server. Okay, so I'm going to go and install my software prerequisites first. I'll click on next here and it's going to take care of installing all the prerequisites that are necessary prior to installing SharePoint server. Of course, the server itself has to have the web server IIS role. So that's what it's doing right now. Once the web server IIS role is finished installing, then installs the Geneva framework runtime, which it needs as well. Then after that, you have the uh, sync framework, the filter pack, SQL server, adumd.net, and then it's done. Installation for the prerequisites has now been completed. The next thing after that, once you click on finish here, it's installing the SharePoint server itself. So you click on install SharePoint server. Sp starts up the splash screen for that. Uh, insert your product key, of course, standard or enterprise, whichever key that you have. Accept the terms. Continue. Now here is important where if you want to install standalone or server farm installation. Standalone works nicely if you have a prototype or something that you uh, want for short term, but I would recommend using a server farm scenario for most instances. So this one I'm going to select right here is server farm. And here you have complete or standalone. Once again, in this case, complete is the best option. Standalone installs a few components, but not all of it. Complete installs all components in case you need the uh, other components later. It's always good to install a complete install on all your web servers. So I'm going to select uh, complete. And then file location, you can change the installation, where the installation bits go. Click on install now. And it's installing SharePoint server. And then SharePoint install starts. Now I have sped up the process over here, but of course it takes uh, more than this to uh, install SharePoint and apply updates. After it's all done, it's going to go ahead and show me the next screen, which is going to ask me that do you want to run the configuration wizard after this installation is done? And yes, definitely you want to run the configuration wizard. So I'll leave the checkbox checked over here. Click on close. And once the configuration wizard starts, it's going to ask me a bunch of different questions about my database, about my service accounts, etc. So I'm going to click on next over here. First thing it's going to tell me is there are some services that may need to be uh, stopped or started depending on the needs. So I'll go ahead and say yes for that. That's fine. Go ahead and do what you need. Now, do you want to connect to a new farm or existing farm? In my case, I'm making a new one altogether. So I'll click on this. After you do it for the first server, every server subsequently you will go ahead and say connect to an existing farm and uh, connect to the one that you created first. All right, I'm going to click on next here. Asking me for the database server name, so I'll provide it my database server name. And also my database access account, that's an account that already exists in my Active Directory. And I've earmarked that one to be used for my database access. Now this farm security settings passphrase is going to be a passphrase. It could be any word uh, that you would use to specify this server farm, meaning the second server that you will install. Let's say you install an application server after this one. You will need to provide this passphrase on that server for it to attach to this farm. Go ahead and click on next over here. Then it's going to ask me, where do you want your central administration to go? Which port? I can just take the random port that it gives me or I can specify a new one. 
I'm just going to use 9999 in my case and use the authentication mechanism as NTLM, which can be changed later to Kerberos if you need. And then I'm going to go ahead and accept all the settings that I've set and click on next. And it starts the configuration process. There's 10 steps. It's going to go through each step one by one. And this takes quite a long time as well. I've sped up, uh, sped up this process here so it goes quickly and now it's done. Configuration has been successful. I'll click on finish to finish the process. Next it will automatically navigate me to the central administration for SharePoint. And in there it's going to first ask me do you want do you want to be guided initially or do you want to uh, do your configuration yourself. Now the best thing to do the first time around is let it walk you through the settings. So it, you get guided as to exactly what needs to happen. Then afterwards you can go ahead and do things manually. So I'm going to say go ahead and walk me through the settings. And here I'm going to say no I don't want to wish I don't wish to participate in the customer experience improvement for now. All right. And upon clicking on next here for configuration automatically it's going to ask me which service account do you want to use? To start your services, I'll use the SP service existing account that I'd created earlier. And I'll select almost all the services here, except the Lotus Notes connector service. And I'll click on next. This takes quite a while. Once again, I have uh, sped up this process here. And it's going to finish quickly. The next screen that it takes you to is creating the site collection. And site collection, of course, is where all your information is going to go. So that is something you have to do. I'm naming my site collection SharePoint eLearning. You can provide a description here as well. URL, I'm putting it at the top root URL for the web application. Many different tabs I have for selecting my template to use. I'm going to go ahead and use the collaboration tab and the team site template for right now. Click OK, and it's going to go ahead and make a new site collection with the team site template. Now once that's done, it's giving me the exact URL for it, http colon slash slash spel and all the services that have been turned on and available in the site collection. I'll finish over here. So central administration is where it brought me back to. This is the place where I would come back to later if I wanted to configure any of the setting for site collection for a web application, or if I want to make a new web application or a new site collection, so forth. I'll open up a new tab and just manually go ahead and type in http colon slash slash spel. That's where my site collection is. And it's going to go ahead and navigate me and open up the SharePoint eLearning website, my site collection. From here on out, I can do whatever I like. The uh, top thing, the main things that you want to do at this time is take your site and extend it further by building lists and libraries, managing site permissions, changing your theme, branding it, and then a bunch of things like that to really make it a true collaboration site for your team.